Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today, I'll be breaking down the new Quest Trade investing platform. I'll be showing you guys how to navigate this new design and how to buy stocks step by step. I'll go over the biggest changes and I'll share my thoughts on the new look and feel. And for those of you who prefer the old version, stick around until the end of the video where I'll show you how to easily switch back to the old platform. As you guys know, Questrade has been my favorite online broker in Canada for many years, and their interface has been fairly consistent throughout. But just last week, Questrade launched their new Quest mobile app for smartphones, and with that, they also revamped their web-based app for laptops and computers, which they now call Questrade Trading. This is a whole new redesign, and they're really focused on streamlining the whole investing process, especially for beginners. The new web app is much cleaner and more simplified. They only present the absolute essential bare bones information to the user. I'll show you guys in a minute that the entire investing platform is contained in one single screen. There's no tabs or switching between screens. All of the information and actions required to buy or sell stocks or to view your portfolio summary, it's all available at all times in front of you. I think that this is a fantastic option for beginners who can be easily overwhelmed by a ton of numbers on the screen. And this web app closely mirrors the Quest mobile app, so it offers a more seamless experience for users who trade on both their smartphones and their laptops. But for more advanced investors like myself, this bare bones approach might be too simple. Personally, I love seeing all of the detailed information on the screen. I love scrolling through my entire portfolio, sorting my positions by different metrics, and customizing the different columns. This is why I loved the old Questrade look and feel, but the good news is that the old platform is still there. It's now called Questrade Edge, and at the end of the video, I'll show you how to switch back. Overall, I'm happy with these changes, and I'm so glad that they're keeping the old version as well. Now you have the choice. You can enjoy the simple and streamlined new experience, or for veterans like myself, you can enjoy the more familiar and comprehensive Quest Trade Edge. So really, everyone wins. I've already talked about in my past videos on why I love Quest Trade, and this new freedom of choice is just one more reason. But make sure you check out my past Quest Trade videos to learn the benefits of Quest Trade, the fees to expect, and for a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to buy stocks, how to open an investing account, how to invest in the US market, and other great features like the cheapest way to convert Canadian dollars into US dollars using Norbert's Gambit, how to transfer money from your bank into Questrade, how to transfer money between Questrade accounts, and how to deposit money instantly. So make sure you check those out. And as always, I'll include my referral link in the box below, and that will get you $50 in commission-free trade rebates when you sign up. That saves you $50 and you help to support my channel. So with that, let's jump into the new Questrade investing platform. So we log into Questrade and you'll notice that nothing here has changed. Here we see the account summary and all the options at the top, like account activity and funding your account, that's all unchanged. The only actual changes are to the trading platform, which we access by hitting the green trade button. This is what's new, and this is the brand new redesigned trading platform. And you'll notice that everything you need is all on one page. Before you had different tabs showing your cash balances, showing your orders and a list of your positions. Now there's no tabs. Everything is here all the one screen. We start off by showing a quick summary of our account as a whole. Here in the top left corner, you can choose which account to look at, but by default, we're looking at all accounts. So right now, this is showing us a snapshot of our portfolio as a whole across all accounts combined together in Canadian dollars. This number right here, the $162,000 is the current market value of my portfolio as a whole. This means that if I decide to sell all of my stocks and ETFs right now, this is how much cash I would make. And here are some other key numbers. Here is today's P&L. This is how much money your stocks have gone up or down in value over the course of the day. So since 9.30 in the morning when the stock market opened, some stocks went up, some stocks went down. But you can see that in total, my overall portfolio went up about $155 or 0.1% over the course of the day. This is just short-term performance, so please don't stress out about this number. What I really care about is long-term performance, and you can see that here with the open P&L. 
This represents how much capital gains I've earned at this moment. So since my stocks went up in value, if I decide to sell all of my stocks, I would have made almost $22,000 in profit or capital gains. But I don't actually get this money until I decide to sell. You can also see here a line graph showing a visual representation of how my portfolio has grown over time. And I can choose different time frames from 15 days, one month, three months, six months, a year, or since I started. It's a great visual aid to show you a quick snapshot of how you're doing. So this is all my accounts combined together. But if we click on the top left, we can select a particular account. And today we're going to be looking at my RRSP account. Everything is the same as before, but now we're not looking at my whole portfolio. We're only looking at my RRSP account. And so the numbers are smaller. Down here, we also see our net deposits. So I've contributed out of my own money, $65,000 into my RRSP. The buying power is how much cash I have available to purchase stocks with right now. If I want to see more account details, click the see details button here. Here you can see my total equity, how much my RSP account is worth and my available cash. In fact, I just deposited $500 into my RSP account 10 minutes ago using Questrade's instant deposit feature. So click the pop up at the top right to watch my video tutorial on how to make instant deposits with Questrade. You'll also see here my total deposits into my RSP as well as my total withdrawals. You'll notice here that I have no withdrawals on my RSP and that's because I do not want to ever withdraw money out of my RSP until I'm retired and in a lower tax bracket. And here we have the buying power, which for an RRSP is essentially the amount of cash we have available. In a margin account, the buying power is a little more complicated because it also takes into account the amount of money that you can borrow from Questrade. I'll be making a whole video on how the margin account works and how to invest with borrowed money. All the numbers you see on the screen here are combined in Canadian. That means that my US stocks have been converted into Canadian dollars and combined in total. You can also do the same thing for combined in US dollars or if you wanna separate your Canadian stocks from your US stocks, you can select Canadian only or US only. In today's video, I'm only going to be buying Canadian stocks, so I only care about my Canadian dollar cash. And you can see here that right now, I have $515 Canadian available in cash. So that's how you can see your account balances. Now in this right section, we can see the account holdings. These are all the stocks and ETFs that I hold in my RRSP account. And this right here is one of the biggest changes in the new version of the Quest Trade platform. In the old version, you had a whole separate page just for your positions, where you saw a detailed spreadsheet of all of your stocks and ETFs with a huge variety of metrics, and you could sort them and customize them as you wish. This here is a very stripped down and simplified and honestly superficial version of that list. If you're a beginner and you only have a few holdings, this is fine. It's simple, clear, and easy to read. But if you're like me and you have dozens of holdings and you want to see more detailed information, this list doesn't do it. And that's why I prefer the old version. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how to switch back to the old version. But here is the new version. All of my stocks and ETFs are listed in alphabetical order based on a ticker symbol. You can see here Apple is at the top. And we see the most essential bare bones information. We have the ticker symbol Apple and the company name Apple Inc. We own eight shares. And here is the current market value in the given currency, in this case, US dollars. So at this moment, my eight shares of Apple stock are worth in total 1,143 US dollars. And this number right here shows me my percentage profit or loss. So since I bought my Apple stocks, it's gone up about 13.59%. And if I click on it, it converts it into a dollar amount. So this tells me that my Apple stock has gone up by 13.59% or I've made $136 in capital gains if I sell the stock. If I wanna see the information on the share price, I click the symbol price button. And now instead of seeing how much all of my shares are worth, I only see how much one share is worth. So currently one share of Apple stock costs 143 US dollars. This number right here shows you how much the share price has gone up or down over the course of the day. So since 9.30 AM this morning and you click it to see this number as a percentage or a dollar amount. So this is a list of everything that you own, but you can also click here to build a watch list of stocks and ETFs that you don't own. So let's say I wanna make a watch list of my favorite US tech stocks. And I'll add Facebook, I'll add Microsoft, and I'll add Amazon. And since these are stocks that I'm looking to buy, I can now quickly look them up in a list without having to manually search for each of them every time. 
So if you want to buy a stock, you just have to search by the company name or the ticker symbol. In the case of Facebook, I can search by ticker symbol FB or company name Facebook. And when I click on it, you'll see that this area used to show me my portfolio summary and now it shows me the share price of the stock Facebook. Here you can see the company name Facebook Inc and it's traded on the NASDAQ, which is one of the two largest US stock exchanges. And the current share price right here is 330 US dollars. So if I want to buy the stock, I want to make sure that I have US dollars. And if I don't have US dollars, check out my video on Norbert's Gambit to see how to convert Canadian dollars into US dollars without paying any currency conversion fees. And as before, I can change the time frame of this line graph, looking at over the course of one day all the way to several years. And at the bottom here, we can see some of the most basic metrics for analyzing a stock, such as the previous closing price, the opening price for this morning, the low and high over the course of the day, as well as the 52 week low and 52 week high. On the right side, we have the dividend amount along with the dividend yield if the stock were to pay a dividend, but Facebook doesn't. We also have some fundamentals like the price to earnings ratio, the earnings per share, and the market cap. And if I was looking up a stock that I actually own, at the bottom here, I would see more information on my position in the company. So to look up a stock that I own, like Apple, I could either search for Apple or I can go to my positions and just click on Apple right here. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a more detailed summary of my Apple holdings. And if I scroll down to the very bottom, you'll see a list of relevant news articles that relate to Apple. If I'm done looking at this stock and I want to go back to my portfolio summary, just click the close button here. Now it's time to actually buy a stock. So first we have to search for the stock that we're going to buy. So I search for car.un. This is Canadian Apartment Properties REIT. I've already talked about the stock in detail in my video on the best Canadian REITs to invest with. So check that video out to see why I'm going to invest in it. So to buy the stock, we click the green buy button. And now it gives me a choice. I can choose between two options, either a limit order or a market order. With this new streamlined design, you can only choose between these two order types. If you want more sophisticated order types, you'll have to use the old platform Questrade Edge. I've already made a whole video tutorial showing how to buy stocks and explaining the different order types. So make sure you check out that video. Here, I'm going to be going through the steps a little quicker and I won't explain everything in detail. But here's the short version. A market order is usually what I recommend. It just means I want to execute the trade immediately, which means I will pay whatever the current share price is at this second. A limit order means I want to control what price I'm willing to buy this share for. Right now, the share price of this stock is $58.67. If I think that's too expensive, I could do a limit order. And let's say I want to buy 10 shares, but I'm not willing to pay $58 per share. I'm only willing to pay a maximum price of $55 per share. Now, this limit order will not execute right away. I'll only actually buy the stock when the share price drops to below $55, and that might never happen. That's why I prefer to do a market order because I'm guaranteed to buy those stocks as soon as I click the button, as long as I have the cash available and the stock market is open. Remember, the stock market is open between 9.30 a.m. and 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, Monday to Friday. So I'm going to do a market order and I click next. I have a buying power of $550 Canadian, but this is a combination of Canadian dollars and US dollars. Since I'm buying a Canadian stock, I only want to be using Canadian dollars to avoid any currency conversion. So we click this and we change to Canadian dollars only. So in pure Canadian dollars, I have $515 available as cash to buy stocks with. So I bring up my calculator and I enter our cash amount, 515. But I am buying a stock, and so I'm going to have to take away the $5 in commission fees. So I only have $510 available to buy stocks with. Now I click Snap Quote at the top right to refresh the share price, and I divide by the current share price of $58.67. So I have enough cash for 8.7 shares, but I can't buy a fraction of a share, and so I have to round down, so I can only buy 8 shares. Eight shares will cost me $469, but I have $515 available, so I have enough. So we click next. And this is the confirmation window. I want to buy this stock immediately, so it's going to be a market order in my RRSP account. I'm going to be buying eight shares at this price. It's going to cost this much, and I'm going to be paying about $5 in commission fees. So we click place order. 
and boom, we can see a pop-up window in the bottom. My order has been filled, so I just bought those shares. And now I own eight more shares of the stock, and you can see I now own 31 shares. So there you go, that's how you buy a stock on Questrade. So that's how you navigate the new streamlined platform. If this new interface is too basic and you prefer the old version, don't worry. It's very easy to switch back and here's how you do it. If you want to go back to the old version, which is now called Questrade Edge, here's what you do. You click on Accounts and then All Platforms. And then here at the top right, you click on Questrade Edge. You can use Questrade Edge as a web app or as a downloadable desktop app, but we're going to use the web app version. And all you have to do is click this green Add Questrade Edge button. And don't worry, it's totally free. So now we just click Add, and there we have it, Questrade Edge is enabled. And if I want to go back to the new streamlined version, I just click the red Remove Questrade Edge button. So Questrade Edge is activated, so when I click the green Trade button, it takes me to the familiar Questrade platform that we know and love. Here we have the Balances tab where we can see my total equity and available cash in both Canadian and US dollars separately and together. And when we go to the Positions tab, we can see a list of all the stocks and ETFs that I own in my RSP account with much greater detail and information presented. And we can sort all these holdings however we want, and we can customize which columns to show. I love having all this information on the screen, which is why for me going forward, I'm gonna be using the old version, Quest Trade Edge. But if you prefer the new streamlined design, go for it, you have the choice. In this video, I've shown you guys a little glimpse into my RSP portfolio, but if you wanna see my full portfolio reveal for both my TVSA account and my RSP account, hit the join button down below to gain access to my exclusive members only videos. So there you have it. That's how you navigate the new look and feel of Questrade and how to switch back to the old version that we know and love. I've been a huge fan of Questrade for many years and it's great to see that they're still making an effort to improve and add new features. And if you don't have an account and you wanna get started with Questrade, click my referral link in the box below and you'll get $50 in commission-free trade rebates for the first 30 days when you sign up. That basically means that your first 10 stock trades will be commission-free. That saves you $50, plus I'll get a small referral bonus as well. And make sure you check out my other Questrade tutorials for more in-depth, step-by-step walkthroughs. Thanks for watching, guys, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel on YouTube, and hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, at Canadian T-shirt, click the link in the box below, or click my links on my homepage. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye guys.